come on, up the hill. That's right, you got a tow three and a half ton up here. We've got seven vehicles, a big van and a boat, plus a camper trailer. That is sick. <laughs> <laughs> All the vehicles here can tow three ton or more on paper. However, we're here to prove what happens in the real world when you throw that weight on the back of them. <laughs> we just power through the shuttle. This vehicle tows the caravan better than what the dual cabs tow the camper trailer. It's a holiday romance, that's what this car is. <laughs> it's a holiday romance. <laughs> now the big question many of us have is what vehicle should you buy to do towing duties? Now, can you get away with a four cylinder vehicle or you need to go much bigger? You might have a boat or a caravan and today we're gonna to answer all of those questions plus plenty more. Also, we're gonna let you know what modifications you need to do to make them tow heaps better. Forget what you read in the manufacturer's brochure. Can these small dual cabs really tow three ton? How much better do the big tow vehicles tow it? And most importantly, is it worth forking out an extra 60 to $80,000 for a bigger vehicle? We've got seven vehicles, a big van and a boat, plus a camper trailer. Also, some of the industry's biggest towing, suspension and engine experts. First up, we've got Nathan from Fulcrum Suspensions. This guy is one of the head engineers here who designs, develops and R&Ds all the new suspension technology they make. He's here to help us explain what happens to the suspension when you're towing heavy loads. Next is Rob from Ultimate Diesel Tuning. These guys tune more than 2,000 four-wheel drives a year. The majority of them will be set up for towing, so he knows how an engine should respond with a heavy load on the back. Mike from Clearview Towing is one of the most experienced and knowledgeable towing experts in Australia. He's seen it all, the good and the bad, and will be passing some of his experience on to you. Finally, we've got Tim, the owner of Mitt's Alloy Trays and Canopies. These guys fit trays and canopies to tow vehicles all day long. They're experts in understanding how the weight and weight distribution affects towing. We've got a range of different vehicles that I reckon best represents the most popular different categories you'd typically use to tow. We've got standard dual cab utes, we've got modified dual cab utes, we've got a big 200 series, a 79 series, we've also got a Y62 Patrol and also a Ram 1500. All the vehicles here can tow three ton or more on paper. However, we're here to prove what happens in the real world when you throw that weight on the back of them because what might be okay to top to the local van park or boat ramp is very different to what you need to head off road on the beach or up at Cape York or the Kimberley, which is why many may have bought the trailer in the first place. All vehicles have been fitted with Red Arc Tow Pro Elite electric trailer brakes to help with consistency. We've got a Cub Frontier camper trailer, my trailer boat, and a full-size off-road JB caravan to tow. Of course, the weights on the website are a bit different to the end product for these things, so we're gonna weigh them now before hitching them up. The camper trailer weighs 1,300 kilos. The boat weighs just over 2,000 kilos on the trailer. And the caravan weighs just over 3,000 kilos. Righto, so first up we've got the stock standard dual cab utes. Let's throw a trailer behind them and see how they tow. Firstly, we're gonna add the weight on the back of them and see what happens to the suspension of the vehicle. Adding big ball weight to your tow ball does two things. The main one you see is your rear suspension sags, so your leaves compress and flatten. However, your four-wheel drive is a bit like a seesaw. Watch again and you'll see that as the rear suspension compresses, weight comes off the front axle. As you remove weight from the front, it'll throw the wheel alignment out and the lack of weight gives you less steering control on the front. Compare this to the Fulcrum Suspension Hilux that has a setup made to carry more weight. In terms of suspension, it's not just dual cabs that do this when they're loaded. For example, look what happens to this Y62 Patrol with stock suspension. It shows just how important suspension is to safe towing. If you're towing a heavy van, you can always add a weight distribution hitch, which will take the load off your rear axle and add it back to the front. First up, the four cylinders. We're gonna start with a 1300 kilo camper trailer and compare it how it tows to a two ton boat and then step it up to a three ton caravan. Got the Cub camper on the back of the D-Max at the moment and um, gotta say, it's a pleasure to tow. You know, a few corrugations, but the weight of the trailer isn't pushing the vehicle around. So the vehicle has total control. You don't feel any way, shape or form in any sort of danger or that the handling's being compromised. It tows it quite easily and to be honest with you, you sometimes forget it's actually behind you. In my opinion, it's a great combination. 
These smaller dual cab utes are the perfect vehicle to tow a camper trailer, if you ask me. I'll do it all day with ease, and um, not just on the bitumen like we are now, but also off the blacktop. They'll do it in the sand. They're not that heavy where it's gonna stress this little tiny motor out. So we're at the moment with no weight in the car at all, uh, just the ball weight of the camper. Uh, it's handling fine. Uh, if you were to add maybe a fridge, batteries, um, other bits and pieces in the tray, that's when you're really going to need stiffer springs and shocks. But if anything, I think a little bit that tow ball weight has sort of calmed the car down a bit. It's probably designed, it feels like it's designed to tow this. On the big hill with the camper trailer behind the Ranger, now this is a little twin turbo, two litre engine, and it's towing this camper trailer up the hill with ease. I mean, you know, you gotta back off if anything. It'll do the speed limit, it'll just do it nice and easy. The same as a D-Max, really. It'll tow that camper trailer all day and you don't even know it's there. Uh, the transmission does tend to flick back down from sixth, fifth, and fourth, so it does tend to shuffle through the gears a little bit more. Obviously, it's got a 10-speed gearbox, so you'd expect to generate the torque through this vehicle, it's going to use the gears. I'm in the D-Max at the moment with the boat behind me, and I've got to say, I'm really impressed. I've been lucky enough to do a few highway Ks towing the boat, and it goes to show you don't need a big tow vehicle to tow something around that two-ton mark. It tows the boat beautifully, does lack a little bit on the hills, but there's nothing a good tune wouldn't fix up. Perfect with the camp trailer as well. I think if you're gonna keep the tow weight under that magical sort of two and a half ton mark, all of the modern dual cab utes will do a great job of towing it. Well, we've got the caravan behind the D-Max here, and what can I say? You certainly know it's there. It's a very heavy van and it feels like it's pushing this vehicle around a little bit. Same story with the Ranger. It's just a heavy van and I don't think that these dual cabs are designed to tow three to three and a half ton. It's simply not designed to do that. Not safely anyway. On the flat, yeah, it's not too bad. Stiffen that rear suspension up, put some heavy duty springs in it and you could get away with it, there's no doubt about it. But would I like to do it on a regular basis, tow this van right around Australia? Uh, I don't really think it's the right <laughs> tow vehicle for that sort of load. It's surprising though, the Ranger does does tow it okay, and I'll say okay. I still think that it's really important if you've got a lighter car, then choose a lighter caravan. Just because the manufacturer says it'll tow three ton or three and a half ton, it's a different story when you actually do it. If you took it really easy, look, it'll do it. It'll tow a three ton weight all day long, but um, I think I think there's too much that could go wrong. You're asking a little bit too much from a dual cab ute to put three, three and a half tons on the back. The first things I noticed is there's a lot of weight on the, on the back of this Ranger, and it's lifting the front of the vehicle up quite significantly. Therefore, the handling is um, well, it's less than ideal, let's just say it nicely. It's all over the road. Um, I do find the engine in this thing's lacking a little bit of torque. Uh -uh. The sibling of it has the 3.2 in it, and the 3.2, I've owned one of those, and that had heaps more torque than this thing. Um, I just think it's missing a bit of that when you pull in a van of this size. Like, you absolutely would not want to be pulling out onto the motorway with this car, with this van. So all of our experts said the same thing. The standard dual cabs towed the camper trailer no problem, but especially the Ford Ranger didn't love the three ton caravan. Let's explain why. We've got Rob from Ultimate Diesel here, who tunes over 2,000 four wheel drives a year, mostly dual cabs like this. If there's anyone that can explain what happens when you load up a modern diesel engine, it's this guy. When it comes to our smaller dual cab utes, our four cylinder under three litre capacity, they certainly tow the campers really well, but when it comes to the big caravans, the three tons, they do tend to struggle a little bit. The reason some of our smaller dual cab utes struggle to tow the big caravan, it's purely due to capacity. We're talking about engines that are under three litre, four cylinder engines, compared to the bigger ones, the V8s, which make the power a lot easier down low in the rev range, which is really important when you're actually towing those big vans. 
So let's put this in a real world example. I'm driving along in my vehicle, I've got my three ton van behind me and I get to a really steep incline and I'm doing about 80 k's an hour. It now requires a lot of energy to move that van and vehicle up the hill. So in a larger capacity V8 engines, the torque generated really low on the rev range does it a lot easier. Where compared to our two litre engines, they require the engine to work a lot harder and rev a lot harder to move that momentum up the incline. Thinking of four wheel drive as a push bike, an eight cylinder engine is like having a big strong bloke with massive legs pedalling. Four cylinder is like having a skinny bloke with small legs pedalling. It's gonna take the skinny bloke a lot more effort to get that bike moving. Nothing beats cubic inches and for towing, a big capacity engine just does it better. Now, let's take a look at the mods you should add to your four wheel drive to make it tow even better. So we've already shown you what a stock dual cab can do when it's towing, so now it's time to compare it to one that's been modified. So to demonstrate that, we've got the Fulcrum Hilux. Now the cool thing about this vehicle, and I reckon it's the perfect demonstration is, it's got a tune in the engine and also upgraded suspension. We've got a 300 kilo leaf pack in the back of this, which is almost perfect for the 330 kilos extra load on the rear axle. That will level the chassis and correct the steering geometry and make the vehicle much safer to drive. So this vehicle here is the Toyota Hilux. It's got aftermarket fulcrum suspension in the back. So it's been set up for towing. I think it's got 300 kilo constant springs in the back and it's also got a tune. So it's got heaps of power. Now, the first thing you notice with the aftermarket suspension is it's so much nicer to drive. Now, it's at, at the start when you first jump in, it's very hard to put your finger on it. Why, it's, why is it so good? Well, the main reason I can tell is it doesn't feel like the trailer is actually pushing the rear of that vehicle down. So therefore, the front's not lifted up and you don't lose the handling, the steering of the vehicle. The Fulcrum N80 Hilux has certainly got a lot more response with the throttle. As I said, down low, around 2,000 RPM and below, it's got about 50% more torque, and that's exactly what you need when you're towing. So that you can get up those inclines a lot easier, and also if you're going to overtake, it just helps with that sort of smaller capacity engine compared to your larger engines like, say, your V8 Cruisers. Yeah, the Hilux feels a hell of a lot more planted than the two stock cars, that's for sure. Um, a little bit more power, you just, you have that bit more confidence coming into a corner as well. Hilux tows his caravan surprisingly well. You know, the D-Max and Ranger, both stock standard vehicles, really struggled to say the least when they were trying to tow this caravan. The Hilux with some key suspension mods and also some power upgrades makes, I'm not going to say makes light work out of towing the van, but it does it and does it quite well. It's quite surprising really. If the Ranger and D-Max had similar suspension and a tune to the Hilux, that would tow this caravan a hell of a lot easier. Probably about half an hour ago, I would have completely written off any of these smaller utes if you wanted to tow a caravan, I would have said no way. You're absolutely kidding yourself if you think they can tow what they say from the manufacturer. But when you do get some key mods on them, like suspension and power upgrades, yeah, look, maybe you can actually see these vehicles as a proper tow vehicle that can tow, you know, dare I say it, three tons. It just seems that unless you're going down a hill, you're always quite high up in that rev range when you're towing one of the small like common rail diesels with a big van behind you. Sitting around between two and a half to 3,000 RPM just about everywhere, which means you're really pushing it. You're pushing the boundaries of that little engine and um, you're asking a lot from it. So after testing the four cylinder diesels with a tune and also some aftermarket suspension, there's no doubt about it, they towed much better. They were a lot safer on the road but that sort of caps out about as far as you can go in modifying those vehicles to tow better. So where to from there? Well, of course you step up to a bigger vehicle. Now's the time where you bring the big boys out to play. We've got a single cab 79 series, a 200 series, a Y62 Nissan Patrol, and the one you're probably waiting to see, a Dodge Ram 1500. All these vehicles have modifications and aren't stock, so it's not the perfect test. However, by the end of this test you'll have a very good idea of what vehicles do it best and what mods can make it even easier. Now I'm in a 79 series single cab ute, so I'm no stranger to a 79. This one's standard. Yep, it really needs a tune. That's one of the things you need to factor in the cost of a 79, especially if you plan on towing it. You're going to need an upgraded clutch and you're going to need a tune, just without a doubt. Don't even think you're going to get away with a standard 79 and be able to tow and 
not stress that edge down. But once you're going and you're not trying to climb a hill, it's a very torquey engine. Got heaps of grunt. So lucky you can get a lot of modifications for these things because they need it. The first thing we found was all these bigger capacity engines and heavier vehicles towed the camper trailer with ease. In fact, behind the Ram 200 and Y62, you completely forgot you were towing it. You have to question whether spending big money on a full-size four-wheel drive just to tow a camper trailer is worth it. I bought one of these myself as a tow vehicle first, and with some modifications, it does a fantastic job. The difference between a standard and a tuned 79 is chalk and cheese, because they come so detuned from the factory. One of the most exciting things about the 79 series is the increase in torque you can get with just a custom dyno tune. These cars on average you'll see about 70% gain in torque around 1600, 1700 RPMs. And when you're towing a big load in a Tourer, it just means driving the car around in fourth and fifth gear, it, do, it really does it effortlessly. One thing you will know, and it's pretty well known with the 79s, is they do need a clutch. The factory, the factory clutch in them just won't handle extra torque if you do custom tune the 79s. One of the main things you need to think about when you're setting up a car for touring, especially a 79 or any modern dual cab with a tray on the back, is how long that tray is and how much, how long the drawbar is on the actual caravan or camper trailer that you're going to be towing. Um, you want to make sure you've got good articulation and clearance around that area in the back of the tray. Let me get out a bit of a limb here and make the call that there's probably more 200 series cruisers out there towing big vans than just about any other vehicle out there. And for good reason too, these machines are designed to tow. So this car has got a few modifications that have been done by us here at Ultimate Diesel Tuning. We've done the custom dyno tune. It's also had a transmission lockup kit, as well as a transmission tune with the car and an exhaust system. Some PWR fans to it, and it's running about 35% extra torque with this vehicle and power. So it is really noticeable and it's really complimented when we're towing such a three ton van behind it. They're big, they're wide, they're heavy, stacks of power, and they make three and a half tons look like it's nothing. This vehicle tows the caravan better than what the dual cabs tow the camper trailer. A big hill, and I could accelerate more, I'm just choosing to hold back. I'm just taking it real easy. And the 200's eating this up. Yep, still got the caravan behind me. <laughs> This is pretty wild. It's not until you get in a vehicle like this and actually see for yourself and compare it back to back with a bunch of other vehicles and you really get to understand why the 200 series really is the king of tow vehicles. Yeah, the, t the 200s, there's no doubt about it. They're a perfect choice for a, um, a tow vehicle if you've got a heavy van. This is a test. I've been most excited to try the Y62 towing the caravan. Now, the big diesels have done it good, like the 200 series, because they've got a lot of torque down low in the rev ranges, where you want it, in my opinion. Petrol engines make their torque a lot higher in the rev range, so it'll be very keen to see how this goes, especially at low RPM. And so far, it's towing the caravan with absolute ease, even low down in the rev range. I suppose that's the thing when you've got a bigger displacement engine, there's a lot more torque, a lot more power available, and Y62's got no shortage of that. This thing is really surprising. It is a well planted car. It drives really nice. Uh, for a petrol engine, it has great torque down low. Um, and you can pick one of these things up for a really reasonable rate and you get to listen to that noise all day. Woo! The Y62 tows bloody well, but I wouldn't like to be paying for the fuel bill after it, or the RAM for that matter. Here we go. We're in the Ram. <laughs> yep. It's a big rig. Just like the 200 series, it's not getting thrown around with the trailer. The big caravan's not dictating terms. The Ram has got enough weight to not get pushed around. So you feel in control. If you put your foot down, <laughs> yep, 
Yep, I can see why these are very popular tow vehicles. One thing with the dual cab utes with the big van on, they were all wandering along this gravel road. We didn't, you don't see that with the 200 series or the Ram. Yeah, that is pulling that like a dream. suited to highway K's. Um, the Australian roads are rough, off-road stuff. I don't know the American builds are designed for the, the, the tough environment that we have here in Australia. One other thing with the Ram is you're going to find for a big American car it really should have a bigger GVM. While on paper the Ram has the biggest tow capacity at four and a half ton, this can be a little bit misleading. If you tow a full four and a half ton, you're left with just 87 kilos of payload for the vehicle. So, if you carry 600 kilos in the Ram, including passengers, fuel and luggage, that means you can only tow four ton. These models that have recently come out don't have GVM upgrades for them. So, there's a few guys working on those in the industry and they are coming, but they're not quite here yet. That's a testing done, so let's sum up what we found. If you're towing a camper trailer or anything under 1.7 tonne or so, we recommend a dual cab ute. The bigger rigs do it easier, but in terms of vehicle cost to performance, you don't need anything more than a dual cab ute. You get something like the D-Max and throw suspension and a tune in it and it'll be perfect. When it comes to that two, two and a half tonne mark, you can go either way. A dual cab ute will definitely need suspension and a tune is highly recommended and it'll do it fine. If you're planning on towing that weight a lot, it might be worth looking at a bigger four-wheel drive because it'll do it much easier. Anything over two and a half ton, we reckon you need to go bigger. Not just because of the power, but because of the weight of the vehicle. Ideally, you want your tow vehicle to be as heavy, if not heavier, than what you're towing. A 200, Y62 or Tune 79 would be perfect. The Ram, well, it'll tow anything, but fuel consumption's a lot higher and you're gonna struggle to fit one out for touring and still tow the big weight. These are built for highway towing a big van. Now, without a doubt, all the vehicles we've got in our tow test can tow all the weights, you know, reasonably well, but you can make them better. Now, we wanna run through some of the modifications that are absolutely essential if you plan on making the ultimate tow vehicle so you don't end up wasting your money. With all the vehicles we've tested over the last couple of days, excluding the 79 series, they've had automatic transmissions in them. And the one thing when you're towing a big load behind your car is you see increase in transmission temperatures due to the load and the car shifting between gears. All the automatic vehicles have automatic transmission coolers, but one really good upgrade to that is doing a larger transmission cooler. This will help to reduce temperatures in the transmission and also protect the longevity of your gearbox, especially when you're towing a really large load behind your tow vehicle for long periods of time. Another good upgrade for your vehicle is a transmission lockup kit. What does this mean? It actually locks the torque converter up in the gearbox to get a better direct drive. It also prevents the gearbox from hunting between those higher gears, four, fifth, and six. For you as a driver, towing behind a big van, what does that mean? Reduce temperature of your transmission, stops the gearbox going up and down between gears more frequently, but more importantly, can also save your fuel. So if you're traveling down the highway and a vehicle that wants to overtake you, if he looks down the side of the van and he can't see your face in the mirror, what hope have you got of seeing him? If he overtakes you and you're traveling at 90 kilometers an hour, like a lot of caravanners do, if a truck goes to pass you and you move up on him because you don't know he's there, that could be really dangerous and you don't want that happening when you're away on holidays. So here at Clearview, we've got a solution to make towing a caravan, a boat, or just a big trailer safe for everybody. So let's go and have a look. So these new mirrors here, these are what we call our Gen 2. Our original mirrors we had out there in the market for a long time. And like with everything, things evolve, you get big, bigger and better ideas. And we've got a double slide indicator 
um, power fold, you can have blind spot monitoring, you can have your bird's eye view cameras in the bottom of the mirror if you've got a Land Cruiser or a Mitsubishi or whatever it may be. Um, your top mirror glass is electric. Um, they've got heating in them as well and we heat the bottom glass in this mirror where we didn't do that with the other one. So there's a whole lot of benefits to fitting a set of clear view mirrors. And if you ever decide to sell them, they really hold, they're like a Land Cruiser, they hold their value. So the Clearview Next Gen mirrors, they look fantastic on the car. They're in nice and close. They're a must have when you're towing. And all you gotta do is go like that and hit the road. When it comes to choosing an electronic brake controller, you need to choose one with two different modes, proportional and manual mode. Now proportional is the ultimate all round safe mode. It basically, depending on the weight of your vehicle, how fast you're going and how hard you apply the brake, it'll choose the right amount of braking for your towing load. Second mode is manual mode. Now this comes in really handy, especially when you're off-road or going down a big steep descent. Now the manual mode will let you crank the brakes right up so it'll better hold the weight of the trailer. Now when it comes to choosing the right tyre for a dedicated tow vehicle, your priorities might change over a hardcore four wheel drive. Now what I mean by that is the tow vehicle generally carries a lot more weight, it spends a lot more time on the bitumen, therefore you need a tyre that suits. Now an all terrain is what I've chosen for my 200 series, in particular it's a Goodyear Duratrack. Now I find this is the best of both worlds. It's got a high load rating so it can carry a lot of weight, it's also got great manners on the bitumen and it's aggressive enough to mix stuff in some tough stuff as well. So in my opinion, it's the ultimate all-rounder. Utes make great tow vehicles, but you definitely want to consider how much weight you're putting in them when you're setting them up. So quite often, the big mistake we see down at Mitz Alloy is people want as much space as they can get. Big canopies, big trays, but when you're towing, You've got to think about the length of the drawbar on the trailer that you're towing so you don't get clashes there and overloading the back of the vehicle. Quite often when people put a big train canopy package on the back of their dual cab ute, they put the spare tyres on the back wall of the canopy. Just puts a heap of weight behind the rear axle and makes it terrible for towing. A good way to set up your canopy is to try and keep as much weight as far forward in the canopy as you possibly can. This will give you better weight distribution and make your vehicle so much better to tow with. 1600 train canopy package is really the ideal size for towing. You're going to still be able to fit your fridge, your 12 volt system, some drawers and all your bits and pieces for going away and you're going to be able to tow without any dramas at all. Wow, what a tow test this has been. It's not very often where you get seven very different vehicles and be able to go head to head with a caravan, a camper trailer and even a big trailer boat. Now, over the last three days of testing, myself and the experts have learned a lot about the different vehicles, the different applications of towing and how to improve these vehicles to get the best out of them and make them a safer and better tow vehicle. So from the get go with the smaller four cylinder diesels, we soon learnt that if you're towing a camper trailer or even a big trailer boat like my one behind us here, they are absolutely perfect. They excelled in fact and they're the perfect vehicle to get around Australia to some of the hard to get to places and tow any size camper trailer you want. When you step up to the bigger vehicles like the 200 series, the Ram, the 79 and also the Y62, we soon found those vehicles of course can tow the bigger weight and do it a lot easier. But it wasn't just the power that allowed those big vehicles to tow the weight, it was also the weight of the tow vehicle. There's an age old saying that the tow vehicle needs to be heavier than the weight that you're towing and we found that couldn't be any more close to the truth. Now when it comes to the big question, what is the best tow vehicle? Well, you really need to consider what is the best tow vehicle for you. A lot of these vehicles will tow a lot of different loads and you've got to work out what you're trying to tow. So if you want to tow a camber trailer, any of the mid-sized utes are going to get away with that perfectly. They all do a great job, they're comfortable inside, they've all got great little engines in them as well. You can still set them up with trays and canopies on the back so you can pull all your things in and get away for the weekend with the family. My number one pick for the ultimate tow vehicle would definitely be a CHOP 200 series. A 650mm extension, you've got the comfort, the luxuriousness of the inside of the 200 series but you've got that big V8 engine, you've got lots of weight and you can still have an awesome tray and canopy setup. The small four cylinder utes, uh, the Ranger, the D-Max, the Hilux, they just ate up, just ate up the camper trailer. No, no effort whatsoever for any of them. I thought they were all pretty good. If, if you bought a heavy van, 
go and buy a heavy vehicle and I'm, I've always leaned towards a 200 and I know some of you guys are gonna say, well, I don't have the money for 200, that's all fine. If you can't afford a 200, make sure that your caravan is suited to your ute. You need it to be lighter. 200's my favourite. I'm a little bit biased. I do like my 200 series a lot because I've done a bit of towing with it and it certainly does it nice and easy. I think for me personally, the best vehicle was the 200, but I'm really impressed with the Y62 and the Rams, those larger capacities with a really sturdy footprint on the road. For us, the ultimate tow vehicle of this whole test had to be the 200 series. All the experts raved about it. It towed everything and towed it really easy. But I want to put something out there to you guys. The Y62 really impressed me. And in terms of value for money, I reckon that is right up there. You could probably pick up a Y62 on the second hand market for about $40,000. Now that leaves a lot of money to make up the difference in fuel economy between the big diesel and the petrol vehicle, plus a lot left over for modifications as well. Well, there you go, guys. I've certainly enjoyed this tow test. Learn a stack, and hopefully you guys have too. Now's a bit I want to hear from you guys. Let us know in the comments below what you think the ultimate tow vehicle is and how you'd modify it to suit your towing needs. Really love to hear from you. I'll see you around next time on 4 Drive 24-7.